What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here today with another hobby feature for you. But before that, if you haven't done so already, make sure you head on over to longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content and early access videos. Become a veteran of the long war today. Today's hobby feature is part two of 101 hobby tools you should know, which is basically me just going through my toolbox and sharing with you my eclectic mix of hobby tools that I've accumulated slash used <laughs> because sometimes it's all about buying a hobby tool even though I never used it over the last 25 years or so so it's a really good mix of a lot of things out there that you might not have seen or you know tried to do in the past and maybe not been able to do so well and maybe I can show you some of these tools and some of these nifty things that you just might have laying around the house to help make your hobby easier you know to add to your hobby arsenal out there because let's face it you know there's a, a lot of common everyday items out there just laying around your house or stuff that you can go to Walmart and go in the crafts aisle go in the toy aisle go in the whatever aisle and just pick up and this is this is great looking you know this is great stuff that works really great in our hobby in and of itself so it's really exciting to for me to kind of share with you because I get all nostalgic I'm like man I remember I used this on uh, this project oh it's just so long they, they grow up so fast and it's just been it's been really fun uh, making this this uh, two-part series of videos here and I had a couple requests actually for uh, a couple of people after seeing the first video that they wanted to know how to photograph their miniatures better which I thought was a great idea and I've actually got a lot of tips and tricks on how to photograph your miniatures uh, you can probably see right back here there's a little backdrop that I use uh, for photographing things and you know I got a couple some lighting and and stuff like that so I definitely have a few tips and tricks on that as well now uh, some you know getting back to kind of what we were talking about with the hobby tools you know there's a lot of tools out there there's a lot of things you can buy but you really be surprised at how the least expensive stuff sometimes works the best but you know don't get it twisted if you're gonna buy you know a screwdriver buy a good screwdriver because it's gonna last you for so many years so the same is true with some of the, you know the exacto blades and things like that so you know just uh you know listen to the video kind of take it all in there's a lot there's a lot to process you know hit me up with any questions you have on anything or conversely if you have a project or you want to do something that you're unsure of exactly how to go about and you don't think it was answered in this series of tutorials uh, definitely hit me up in the comments here because I'd love uh, to you know try to help you with your hobby projects because uh, you know just because I might not have it uh, a tool for something doesn't mean I haven't seen it or read a tutorial online or, or heard about it or seen somebody do it in the past because uh, I sometimes I just I don't even know how I know this stuff but people are like yeah I'm trying to do this so I was like yeah this is not and they're like how'd you know I was like I don't, I don't even know actually <laughs> I really don't sometimes <laughs> so without further ado let's jump right into uh, 101 hobby tools you should know part two All right, so now we're going to get down to the bottom, the very bottom of, of Rob's hobby toolbox <laughs> in today's video. Now, I wanted to save the best for last because that was going to be just like all of the stuff <laughs> because we already did the top, the quick release section and, the, and the, the first tray right here. So I wanted to get down to the bottom here and spend more time on it because there's a lot of stuff in here. All of it's very good stuff. You don't necessarily need all of it for your hobby, but hey, it's always good to have some of the stuff. First off is a pack of rubber bands. I keep random rubber bands you know just to hold stuff together and help it glue um, you know give it drying time and things like that for uh, various projects and then I've got these three little clear uh, acrylic things and you're probably like what the heck are these these are the tentacle the new uh, mark II tentacle makers from green stuff industries and you can check them out on their website I think it's greenstuffindustries.com I'm probably flashing it up on the screen right now and what's cool about this is it makes all those um, green stuff wires and things and and crazy looking um, mutation bits or just power feeds and cables that you see out there in a lot of people's conversions nowadays and I have a pack of them I have some loose ones in here that have dried and I'll show that to you here in a few then I've got a nice cutting mat well by nice I mean <laughs> well seasoned cutting mat that uh, that fits right into here just in case I'm over at somebody's house or I'm at a game store and I you know obviously you don't want to tear up their table so just pull this out and you can work on it and it fits right in the toolbox I think it was a lot bigger I cut it down in half and I think I have the other half over here I use it with my airbrush and stuff then I've got a recent addition to the toolbox this is the clay shaper and what's cool about these is they're great for getting into uh, pressing tape 
and friskets and things into hard to reach spots for airbrushing but they're also really good for using green stuff and, and modeling green stuff without cutting into it which is really neat too and those are pretty much invaluable then I've got the bone saw and this thing is some serious business now you see I got the jeweler saw here too which is more for precision and getting in around things and, and lopping specific parts of things off this is just for getting in there and tearing things up cutting through resin cutting through all sorts of different things but remember when you're using these tools you basically you're not pushing on it you're basically using friction and gravity to slowly just you just basically push it back and forth forward and back forward and back forward and back and you don't need to grind into it because what that's actually going to do is destroy these teeth here and this is not this is not a you know your your normal saw for tools and things like that it's just basically works by friction and gravity which is really interesting i didn't know that at first i tore a bunch up and somebody told me that then i got these really cool purple <laughs> oh my gosh becky <laughs> have you seen his little paper mache things no nah, it's just the hole punch it's got a really small hole uh right there and that's why i liked it the, obviously this is for scrapbooking or something because of the pur purple handles but it's very good to punch through plastic card and punch holes and things and just give you all those little uh nubs and things like that that you're gonna want for studs and and other crazy things like that i also have a leather punch which is really cool because it punches back up through uh, the plastic card itself then a variety or a grip I would say of magnets now these are the primal horizon ones you can find a lot of these this is actually mini wargaming's group they still produce products believe it or not and uh, they ship these out of Canada to a lot of folks now I have a bunch of these because I used to own a game store and I would just grab them off the shelf but honestly you can do better by ordering from KJ magnetics which are right here they're in the states they're in Pennsylvania uh, k j Magnetics, they will get you uh, a grip of stuff. You know, you can order 50 or more at a time. And, you know, they're pretty affordable, to be honest. I would definitely check them out. So I've got stuff for, you know, what I do like about the uh, the Primal Horizon stuff, the mini wargaming guys, is that they give you this guide for basically, you know, what sizes are for what. And you go down the list here, and I'll just leave it up there so you can take a screen cap of it or something like that. But it really does help with the hobby you know this guide right here but if you're you know say like me and you had you need 300 magnets for a project you know fully magnetizing a insert tyranid monsters creature here maybe you want to go with kj magnetics just to get your stuff on the cheap then we've got the jeweler saw and this is a really interesting uh, kind of invention it's literally used by jewelers to you know create those custom pieces and it's it's a precision instrument it works the same way as the bone saw you know it's not for grinding it's for slowly back and forth and getting into things and it is it is a very precision instrument you have to make sure that you have the right tension right here between these two points and you know that it accommodates a variety of different uh, saw uh, teeth and also thicknesses and lengths and things like that. I have just the, the basic hobby one in here. And what it's great for is getting in around figures. You know, if you got something, you've got a dude that needs a head chopped off and he's got a backpack on it, you can get around, you know, think about it. Now I can insert this between the head and the backpack, twist it, twist it, twist it, come down at a nice angle and basically start sawing across to the front of the model and get that head off that model and that's what this is for it's a very precision instrument that's really great and does a lot of good things then I've got the uh, I call this a Walmart bag this is where I keep all my all the cool stuff I find at Walmart because sometimes when you got spare time just go through the arts and crafts aisle at, at Walmart and you never really know what you're gonna find I found brads I've used these on uh, armor plating on tanks and things like that this was something I found online these are more studs I think they're for model railroading to punt to actually glue into uh, the actual railroad ties themselves I'm not sure but also if you drill these out and insert them into shoulder pads or legs you can make a really custom looking marine then I've got these great chains that cost like a dollar each I swear it but I mean the length of chain it's good you just basically cut off what you need prime it up you're good to go I bought a bunch they were on sale I think for 50 cents each and there's you know there's one length of uh, cut down I've used a lot of this for another project but basically that's about how much you get right there so that's a very good it's a very good deal you know always check out your Walmart in the craft section because you never know what you might find and you're gonna prime over it and dry brush it anyway so you might as well just go with it you know I feel like saving money is where it's at in this hobby because more money you spend on minis uh, then I've got the, the tubing spectacular right here 
This was the old Gale Force 9 uh, plastic card accessory. I think it's plastic variety pack. I'm not sure. But what's cool is that these, these tubes uh, are telescoping, right? So they all insert into each other and you can pull them out for different projects. It's great for kit bashing and, you know, customizing. There's some uh, rail, you know, some I-beam stuff in here too. Basically, I bought like 10 sets of this stuff. Um, when I found out the game the Gale Force 9 wasn't really going to be producing as much stuff and not getting stuff out as quick So I just kind of scooped a bunch up just so I'd have it now Yeah, you can buy a bunch of you know um, Stuff from Plastruck in different sizes and cut it down yourself But I feel like for convenience factor this is probably the way to go and my heart of hearts You know, I kind of feel like that's just super easy then one of my most favorite tools that I use literally all the time is a leather punch this is from golden eagle trading it's even stamped on there and that is actually who i found it um i found this on their ebay account probably 10 or 15 years ago to be honest and what's nice about it is that it's got this little dial right here so you can adjust the actual uh, punch size so when you got a piece of plastic card you're basically punching through the plastic card like this you know up into the back of the plastic card now I punch through this because it's a piece of paper but if it's plastic card it's gonna look like a stud like a you know um, an armor plated plated stud and you can go from you know super thick right there all the way down to super thin depending on what you're trying to do so as long as you map out the line of where you want to punch you know put all these like um, basically brads or rivets in your armor plating you can basically just come through punch it all out and then flip your piece over and it looks like you know it was riveted literally riveted to a vehicle which is really cool and you know you can use this thing for a lot of things not just armor plating but you know it's not going to punch out things like that whole punches that i showed you earlier which is uh, a whole nother use in and of itself and then i've got the uh you know your normal green stuff basically stockpile here this um generally these cost about six seven bucks if you buy them from need tight i think everybody else under the sun licenses and sells them but this is probably the way to go this i has been untouched i have a, a little ribbon of it that i've been working off of for a few years but and i also had this this is probably at least three years old but i remember the last one i bought literally lasted me five years so <laughs> it can't say enough good things about having some need tight in your bag then I got some spare X-Acto blades, not to be confused in, in the last video of the 100 pack for just normal uses. These are the ones for the foam cutter, which was this uh, neat, nifty little tool right here from the last video for cutting through foam core and such. So that's my refills for all that because remember, whether you're using that tool or a normal X-Acto blade, you always want to have a fresh, clean blade for you know most of your cuts. And then this is a really interesting uh, blade right here. This is also for cutting foam, but it's for uh, a bigger version of the exacto blade so if you have the big crafters hand, uh, crafters um, exacto tool uh, at, for like woodworking and things like that these will fit into it and these are also for cutting uh, especially designed for cutting foam which I don't have the handle for it because I lost it but it's always good another spare pencil right here then I've got uh, stashed in the corner of my zip kicker bottle which when the tray fits in it actually kind of you can jam it to the front so this doesn't get depressed and, and messed up um, then I've got my stash of all sorts of different grits and grades of uh, sandpaper all at the bottom here because you can never have enough of sandpaper let me tell you when you're doing a project and you need to get some get a nice finish on it that's uh, the way to go now this is the old Gale Force 9 sculpting tool kit which I, I'm not even sure what's going on with Gale Force 9 to be honest I know Battlefront bought them and they haven't really been kicking out as much product lately but what's cool about this thing is it literally has every sculpting tool you could need for green stuff and I actually added a few I've got some what is it these ones right here which are actual dental tools that my dentist I sweet talked her into giving me some older ones she had now they're not they're not obviously made uh, cut out for dental work anymore but let me tell you what they will uh, sculpt some fur and do some crazy stuff that one's stuck in there pretty good so I'm not gonna grab it out and there's one tool that I don't have in here that I leave in my paint uh, my paint kit so to basically scrape uh, paint out of the bottle caps I use as palettes so there's that big you know the big basically spatula one so there's the kit there and um, like I said I'm not exactly sure if you can still get these but man if you can find these on the cheap because they are a little expensive. I think they're 50, 50, 60 bucks to be quite honest. Um, you know, this is definitely worth picking up if you have the spare 
the spare cash and or the will of desire to actually, you know, do some green stuff sculpting from time to time because it is a little daunting to be honest and maybe we should do a video on that, like do some green stuff sculpting. So, you know, drop it in the comments if that's something you'd like to see and maybe we can, um, you know, maybe we can entertain that at a future date. This is my wire, my power cables and my tentacles uh, pack here. And what's cool about this is there's all sorts of variety in here. Back in the, back in the day, you used to have to go and buy, now this this is stuff, more dollar stuff at Walmart, and it's copper wire, it's great, you know, you can bend it, you can kind of put it anywhere you want. You got a couple of uh, different links of that right there. Then there's guitar wire, which is literally exactly guitar wire. It's hard to work with, it's very difficult to bend, it's not, it's not easy to work with, right? And it's very difficult to use, but it's literally guitar wire. And it was great back in the day for, you know, doing conversions, making your custom power cable feeds and things like that. And I got a bunch of that and there's some right there that I never got around to using. But what's happened in recent years is people like Dragon Forge um, Studios, Dragon Forge Miniatures actually took all of that stuff and casted it in pewter. So you can, you can go on over there and pick up some of that cast it in pewter so it you know it basically bends super easy you don't have to worry about you know all the problems with using regular guitar wire that stuff just super easy to work with glued in place good to go stuff will look great but say there's a particular length or a particular um, depth that you want to make custom and that's where this stuff comes in and these are little green stuff basically we'll call them um, sausages <laughs> that I used the green the green stuff industries tentacle maker to make now I let them dry and I, I basically put them on wax paper and let them all dry out because they still got a little bit of bend in them not too crazy it's basically like they start to start to basically become like the guitar wire but they'll still serve a use at some point you know maybe uh, structuring something out a big project or something like that so I don't want to throw stuff away and they're small enough that maybe I could use them to come down for different things here and there but while they are still slightly tacky and you got like you know six hours to work with this stuff you don't even have to worry about it you know they will uh, basically you can bend them, you know, mash them, twist them, bop them, turn them to fit any space that you need for your particular conversion. So that was the green stuff. Where is it? That's what you make with these things. And maybe we can do a whole nother video on that as well. Like how to use these. And let me tell you what, these Mark twos with it being clear so you can actually see what you're doing instead of kind of guessing from the opaqueness uh, is really where it's at because the new ones, the new ones are far, a far superior design. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's really good. I'm glad he did that because that was, it was a little annoying to make, but he uh, recognized the problem and definitely corrected it. And having a whole like line of these things to basically convert and use his power feeds, you know, for your uh, conversions is really cool. I mean, like I said, nobody wants to be sitting there bending guitar wire for hours like we used to have to do back, back in the day. Now you can just use the green stuff industry stuff or buy that casted Peter wire and, you know, just, it's super easy. Easy game, easy life. And that's what this hobby is all about because sometimes people don't want to spend all day hobbying. You know, you want to get your stuff painted on the tabletop and getting your games in. So that is it for my hobby toolbox we got to the bottom we got through it it took just about as long as i thought it would so i'm glad we turned that into a second video thanks for hanging in there with me yo hobby maniacs thanks for checking out my channel don't forget there's tons of other tutorials unboxings and tips and tactics videos on here as well and make sure you visit my best friend kenny b's fresh hobby channel over on next level painting